Game number two has ended in favor of the Damascus Spurs. Now we're <laughs> nice heading <save>. into... <laughs> well done, right? Now we're going into game number three, which is on Curl's Tolo. We have the Damascus boys going up against Diamond Skin, our draft has started. And surprise, surprise, the Tyrael got banned out. Doesn't shock me at all, yeah. not after the last two games, and especially considering that this is Curl's Tolo. When I say target, chat says ban with a two-minute delay. Target. There we go. <laughs> to have a big pick for the Masters boys, giving themselves some globals. They who played against it last time, this time they want to use it for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Brightwing <laughs> Abathan, you know, that kind of screams, hey, we can go Tracer now. We can go Illidan now. We can do whatever we want at this point because you can go Greymane. There's so many things that at this point could be dropped by Damascus boys. Let's talk Jaina for a moment. Double Jaina burst damage. Hell yeah, we're in for that. So there's a lot of things that they could play. Very open draft start. And this is map number three, of course. Another thing that I want to point out, we didn't really talk about it during the semifinals, but we mentioned it earlier today. Varian is banned. Varian is not allowed in this tournament. As a general rule of thumb that you can also remember for the future, if Blizzard releases a new hero, any tournament that is official part of the Blizzard circuit does not allow the hero to be played for two weeks. So we are playing on the Varian patch, but Varian is banned out. He got released on the 15th. That means he is still banned today, but he will be allowed for the third qualifier. If you've been watching some other tournaments that are not part of the official Blizzard tournaments, you might have seen the hero already in competitive play, but that's something that we're actually like having uh, because they can use whatever rules they want here. Yeah, their tournament. And it makes a lot of sense as well. The two-week allows for any potential bugs to be sniffed out, anything potentially uh, issue with the hero in terms of adjustments to be made. It's always a good policy. So, other picks here. We're seeing Diamond Skin with the Muradin, their first tank, and Li Ming to combo with the Mount Furion. And the Damascus boys want to deny a bit more of that sustain and obviously that poke potential to interrupt the tributes in the form of that Zarya. Yeah, Zarya has been taken away. There's also, of course, like the, uh, yeah, the amount of like shields that you can pressure out. And which, if you want to blow someone up, if you, for example, decide to go into something like a double Greymane, a double Jaina, no matter what exactly you're trying to do there, if you have someone that can just like drop that last moment shield, that can always be a big issue. Just that sustain throughout team fights in Zarya compositions has oftentimes become a problem, and this is one of the reasons why we're having them push it away. And I am, I really think that's a smart ban. Eternal is a beast on Zaratul, and if he is also then helped out by the Abbot and the Brightwing, you know you have dead heroes on your roster even before the fight starts, so that is a very smart move by Diamond Skin. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. They still have the potential of uh, running into the Tracer or the Illidan, but the Zeratul probably slightly more scary. We're seeing Tykes, and we are seeing Illidan. Very scary. No potential for Deterial to combo with this or the Zarya, so it's going to be interesting to see what the final tank is for Damascus boys. Whereas Diamond Skin, um, now is their time to react. Johanna. Johanna is very solid for them. They could also run ETC. Uh, they can't run ETC. He was stitches. banned first. I am being... I need to shush. I mean, I, I think <laughs> they could run Stitches. It's not necessarily... Like, usually when you're playing Illidan composition, the thought process is to really drive the composition into the opponent's team. ETC, uh, yeah. Stitches does kind of the opposite thing. He tries to drag you in. And with Brightwing, if she goes into Emerald Wind, for example, you could always try to position Brightwing then between the opponent and the Stitches, try to pressure everybody away. That's one of the roles that oftentimes a Zeratul with the Void Prism tries to fulfill in that comp. Just like theorycrafting a little bit about potential comps that could be used, and we know that they have a good Stitches player on their setup, so that's definitely true, but we could definitely see both of these heroes right now. So there's quite a lot that they could do for now. Diamond Skin, on the other hand, again, just banking their hopes on the fault set here. Yep, getting at least a little bit of global for themselves and a little bit more. Their second tank hovering over the Haka, and they do pick that. That'll be going over to Nanda, who's been playing it pretty well throughout all of the game so far, especially in that last game, giving his team a big boost in XP and getting some good ganks. And Damascus Boys, like you said, going for that Johanna, easily the most solid tank left yeah. in the pool at the moment, and it gives some good potential to group people for uh, Dan if he wants that metamorphosis. I mean, it was definitely the uh, most likely tank for them to pick here. I think they could have, if they really felt the need, deviated. We talked a bit about the Stitches. I really feel other heroes would not really be a big option for them in the lineup that they're playing here. Not with the Sustain, but the Johanna, that is something that they can now use and they've done in the past. We've seen it with a much higher priority lately, uh, just as is. 
Again, we're going to go into game number three. It's the best of five. The Moscow's boys win. They are qualified for next year for the league. And Diamond Skin, of course, they need to win three in a row. And they have to start winning now. So, guys, let's jump in. Quest Hall is our third map here at the HGC 2017 Euro Qualifier. And we are getting ready. Indeed, I'm going to run to the loo quickly because I have not had the chance and one of the players hasn't joined, so this is probably my only chance. So we'll be yeah, right back very quickly. Makes quick. you worse, but I'm going strong here. It's like the only reason why I sometimes talk fast because there's a lot of pressure, uh, if you know what I mean, Kappa. Okay, guys, so um, this is going to be big. Again, next week we have the tournament starting again, the third qualifier. And for everybody that's currently out there that says, hey, I want to give it a shot as well, you can still actually participate in the tournament. Next week, qual qualifiers are totally open. There's no entrance fee or anything like it, so you can still participate in next week's qualifier uh, if you also want to have a chance to also end up on stream being, uh, being casted. For now, though, this might be the last map of the day. There could, of course, be two more, depending on the result here. Diamond Skin has shown great performance in the last two uh, games, even though they weren't able to win them. But they have the potential, which they showed several times. So let's find out if the Damascus boys can actually close it out with a 2-0 victory. Keep in mind that earlier on already, we had a setup in which team led with 2-0 and found themselves on the fifth map. Brightwing, the last one is chosen. I think the last player also just joined our lobby. So we can go in for that. Additional information about the HTC is can be found in the chat. If you use the command here, you can also go to uh, uh, the Heroes Esports Twitter of Blizzard. There's an esports website for Blizzard that they're currently working on as well, giving even more information. There's a the North American qualifier that is starting up into the second round uh, fairly soon as well. So there's quite a lot of Heroes Esports happening right now. The tournament in China too, and with next year, Blizzard is really making that next big step towards like giving you guys as the audience more regular content to watch the play has more money, more time, to, like a, a more stable practice environment as well with it. So, yeah. We're having 9 out of 10 ready, which means that we're just waiting for uh, Alex, the pro G. And once that he's ready, we're going to go straight into our third game with... Did you wash your hands? Yes, I did. Okay, good boy. Would you have told me if you didn't? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, I can No, I'm still <laughs> covered in all sorts of things. I came right back to cast. <laughs> okay, guys, let's jump into our uh, third game and see who's going to take it here. As you heard, the countdown has just started. The Muscus boys. Okay, I was all. This is like always the scariest moment for me because sometimes they switch around the teams and then I have to adjust my overlay, which takes me sometimes longer than the loading <laughs> of the game lasts. So, yeah, there can yeah. be all kinds of confusion happening. But as you can see right now, it's all good. Yeah, how dare players have good computers with fast loading times give us no time to react. It's, it's super frustrating, isn't it? How dare they? So inconsiderate. Game number three. It could be the last one. It could be the last map in this best of five, everybody. To the left, it's the Damascus boys with Knappe on Brightwing, Crosby on Tychus, Alex the Pro G on Johanna, Eternal on Illidan, and Remabala on Abatha. And to the right side of the map, it's Nandon de Haka for Diamond Skin. We're seeing Chris on Liming, Wolf John Malfurion, Rapers on Falstead, and Chris Plosion on the Muradin in this game. And let's find out if with this Illidan composition, the Damascus boys can make it a 3-0, or if Diamond Skin is starting their comeback here. So starting off with the level 1 talents, we're going to be seeing Abatha with that pressurized lands, of course, going with the Symbiote build to protect that Illidan and empower him as much as possible. Whereas other talents, Moonburn from Alfurion, he wants to help clear the lanes as quick as possible. And the Gathering Storm for Falstad wants to go for that instead of an auto attack build. So it's going to be a very ability power focus style from Li Ming and Falstad. One of the things that I want to also like mention again is uh, we talked a lot about like the flashy plays in the last game. We had a couple of really cool survives on the side of Alex, great sanctifications. And also Eternal, of course, with a pretty awesome, a couple of pretty awesome moves. Not to forget about leaving there. But one of the players that I want to give a pretty big shout out now that we're here in the third map, oops, with Illidan being locked down and able to escape, is Knapper. Little Brightwing down here. The cleansers that we've seen on the last map were absolutely insane. And throughout the entire series, he had incredible play. We've been mentioning him a bit on the first map, where on his Malfurion, he had great synergy with that Tyrael and was one of the driving forces behind them. 
but Gnappe is playing absolutely exceptional here. Some of the cleanses that we saw in the last game allowed uh, allies to survive to get into better positions when Forza was trying to gust. So big, big shout out here to Gnappe. Exceptional player thus far and definitely one of the pillars of the team. Alex continuing his little aggression that he's been doing basically all day today. Uh, in, only instead of Ontario, this time on the Johanna, trying to lock down Muradin, but Muradin does get out. Muradin without the third wind does have the block talent instead, but he's still Muradin, he will regen quick enough. The one thing that we have to watch out for now is that at two minutes into the game, we have Siege Giant camps and Bruiser camps spawn on the map, and that's really the moment where the teams can start to make a bit of a play. You always hope to get the Siege Giant camp and having the tribute spawn on the other side of the map. So that's something to watch out here, as we already have two heroes starting to walk straight towards the right side to go for the camp here. Illidan usually takes that role for the Illidan team, but in this case, we still see him up at the top lane and not making any moves here, not trying to go for that gamble. Yeah, no camp being taken here. There was always the potential of Nanda and Falstad rotating to that camp to try and steal it, but in this case, it just means that it won't be available in time for the objective. They may just leave it for a little bit later. The Laws of Hope and the bigger they are have been taken here. Both of the teams on level 4. Tribute is going to spawn any moment now. And that's when we're going to see if the camp is going to get value. But the Tribute spawning at the bot lane. So the team can go for the Tribute and at the same time try to go for a bit of a BD push. Keep in mind that they have at a maximum 4 bodies into in the fight. Since Abathai is not going to be willing to really go toe to toe with these heroes. Looks like they're actually only going to have 2 bodies down here. Abathai going to be able to jump onto Alex to harass, but Kanapi came up to top lane to help Illidan and instead puts himself in danger, gets pulled in by the hacker and picked off. Wow. Nanda. That's a bit... Yeah, we were just like praising him for his performance and that's definitely putting the team a bit behind. I guess the original idea was to just push the lane and up at the top. Illidan is great at doing that more or less solo and having heroes interrupt down here. Look at this, Crosby barely saved by Abbott. That was a really close call. Alex is not safe yet, but is able to get away without dying. Yeah, Alex does pull back. And as such, the first tribute of the game will go over to Diamond Skin. But once again, Kadabra has come right back up and it's time for round two. Towers as the third all begins to work it down. The ammo's already drained, but Raid Boss coming up, getting some stacks and some damage onto Ethernal. They will kill off the towers and the wall here, but they can't go any further. And yeah, they need to pull to back very quickly. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they get value thanks to the wall that they were able to destroy here. And it's one of the things that we oftentimes see, actually, in uh, the Asian meta, talking mainly China and also Korea, that they use Illidan to push uh, aggressively against structures and just, like, trying to take towers down, even keeps at some point. We have in the past seen players even go as far as going for Hunt to have a bit of global mobility to play around that. Talking about playing around things, Nanda down here is finding himself in a bit of trouble! Illidan thought for a moment about going deep enough to chase him down, but instead they're moving away. But it was a pretty big commitment of time that didn't result in a kill. Yeah, they had no time for Abathur to jump onto Eternal. They're good boys with the friend or foe there. But Abathur had been on Alex that entire time, so he did not have the time to switch onto Eternal, so he couldn't help him go for the kill. If he had at the time, though, Abathur did take Needle Spine. So he is able to get a little bit of extra poke damage for anyone he does jump onto. Great camp on the side of the Blurred team. They did a really good job timing it. So now he's pushing through the mid lane. And this means the longer the fight over the tribute here lasts, the better for Diamond Skin. They're going to get a lot of value from that mid lane camp pushing. Chris with another interrupt attempt, already zoned out, but they get value through it, and that's really important. Chris Plosion actually for a moment thinking about going a bit deeper, but stopped by Eternal. Nappa took the tribute, but the camp went through the wall, and that's a one and a half lead that we're seeing at this point for Diamond Skin. Yeah, Falstad still also pushing top. We're only right now seeing Tychus rotate up to try and do something about it, while mid lane continues to be pushed. Crosby gonna try and do some damage, but that barrel roll able to get Raid Boss out. He'll take a lot of damage, but he is alive. Now the question is, can they capitalize and get Crosby Eternal arriving in time to go on to Rainbow's here? The Needle Spy is going to do some huge damage here and they get the kill. Welcome to Illidan Abathur. So, yeah, that looked for a moment very scary. Eternal is trying to use the Fender 4. Cooldown is ready. 
Uh, Stormbolt misses, but we have another 10 abilities, which is one of the reasons why they immediately jump back. Because, of course, once again, uh, the Mighty Gust. Brightwing, by the way, getting value at the bot lane. And they can let the next tribute go, so they don't even have to fight for it. Of course, if they get 10, they will most likely make a play. But right now, they, s they already picked up a tribute on their own. They can simply let that slide and wait for Abathur to get level 10 abilities so that we can have a copy in the team fights. Yeah, they really want to just get that as quick as possible. But if the objective spawns quite soon, they will have it, like we said. And the question is, how much can they capitalize off it? Because more mercenaries, once again, Inadas just completely ignored the mercenaries that are usually his job. And as such, those top sea giants have not really been taken at all. Bless Shield missing, and as such, Wraith Boss gets out. Yeah, that was a huge cool on the committed just before the tribute spawn. They really wanted to go for the kill. Interesting approach, but Iron Skin, I like it. They try to intercept here and get a kill, but Iron Skin used by Alex. And at the bot lane, we still have Illidan, who's now moving uh, back. But Chris Lotion <laughs> does need to start hitting a few of those storm balls. There's always a lot of dodging and juking happening with Gnapp and Eternal. And Tribute up at the top lane seems to be going over to Alex, actually, in this case. False, it is too late. Uh, he uses the gust, though. They want to try and get something out of this. Isolation misses Crosby and Alex. On the run, they are very outnumbered. It's the comes away of force. Crosby going to give his life for Alex here. He knows that he has no escape, whereas Alex does. So he's going to make sure that Alex gets out and doesn't burn too many abilities. But with that, boss going to be started by Diamond Skin. But in response, hit it down and Brightwing starting at the boss in the bot lane. Yeah, together with Abatha, so they're just trying to go for a quick trade here. Not quite sure how fast they're going to get that though, because as you can tell, the top boss has been taken. Now, Tychus is back, and the bot lane is halfway done. Looks like they are going to get this, since nobody is rotating down it. Oh, that's a great tribute spawn for Eternal and the Damascus boys. Yeah, they're going to try and rush that down very quickly. They get it, and as such, they're going to pressure onto this tribute while the boss pushes in. If it can grab the fountain, then that is a huge deal, but that's still going to take a while. But they have time. Alex can delay this for a very long time, but here's the clone. They want to go in. They go for the clone, and let's see if they can make that play. Diamond Skin already used. They're starting to move in the mid lane once again. The root on the ground. There's Wolf Joe at the same time with the Tranquility trying to pressure it through Knapper with the attempt to simply get the tribute, but he can't steal it away, and they will have to back out here. In comes Chris Plosion, jumping in immediately, trying to go for Crossview, gets cleansed by Knapper. They turn it around again, and they go for Li Ming. She's dead, and now the chase is on. Eternal still pushing through. He gets the heal, goes on to Wolf Joe. He's already managed to grab the false set there. They grab up here, they grab Nanda and Chris Plosion. The only survivor for his team. The boss went through the forts and is now going to push onto the tier twos with a curse. It's got so much health oh, count. Oh, that Keep. is bad news and that looks very much like Keep. They are starting to jump in and this is brutal. Again, 13 talents are in burning rage. The sixth sense is being used. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a keep. I mean, no matter what you do at this point, don't even hit the boss for it. Alex is beast-stepping! <laughs> Alex is beast-stepping the opponent! They are starting to take that massive lead here, taking the fight. Again. They are trying to go through! They are they going end, for the they core! They want to end it 10 minutes in! We're 10 minutes into the game and they're making a play for the core! There's the gust to try and delay it, and Illidan is rooted, but he's getting the damage. Boss will fall here, but remember, Nanda does not have isolation. He whipped it earlier. Count on, they're going to get it. They qualify. They qualify for 2017. The Damascus boys with a 3-0 victory 10 minutes into the match.